We got my man G Herbo coming through. Hey, bro. Uh, I'm yeah, man, that's no. how I like to see my boy, man. Yeah, I got to work today, man. Yeah, I got to work from hey, home, listen, man. man. This is exactly how I... Exp Yo, listen. When I when I knew I was talking to you, I was like, "Cool." But you know, you know, Herb. You know, I always talk to you about my kids, right? Every time I see you, I be oh, giving yeah, you updates yeah, on my kids. I'm like, "Man, my man gonna be sitting with with the baby and all that." I'm telling you. It's how I got First off, how you home, doing, bro? <laughs> how you doing, Herb? It actually, it actually feel good to be working like this, man. I feel good, bro. I'm cool. I can't call it, bro. Now that's amazing, man. I mean, like you know, we had a we had a time right now where you know last year taught us a lot. You know, what I mean, last year taught us a lot about you know um, things that we care about, things that we put time to. And you know, I've been watching you for the man beyond that. Ten years ago, let me before we get to anything. Ten years ago, my man chasing cash tells me one day he's like, "Yo, it's these two kids you got you got hear about. They from Chicago. One." Uh, Lil Herb and, and, and Bibby. And I look up now, you got a 10-year career and you're only 25 years old, bro. That's insane. That's crazy, bro. I be saying that all the time. Like, I've really been, like, rapping and making a name for myself, man, and kind of, like, you know, having 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 a foot in the industry for, for 10 years now, like a real decade, bro. It's really crazy, man. And for me to still be able to just keep elevating and continuing to work and perfect my craft, bro, just let me know, like, my potential is limitless, bro. It's crazy. Good looking, bro. Absolutely. No, man, I mean, like, listening, you know, to this album, like, listening to it, what I really got from it, I got celebration, I got suffering, and I got awareness. You know what I'm saying? So you being, you know, you having a 10-year career, and like you said, like, just honing in on the craft, how's that journey been, or how was the journey when you created this project? Um... Overall, man, my journey just in the industry, bro, period, is doing music. It's been crazy, you know, because uh, I took the I took the independent route through it all, you know what I'm saying? And just being so young when I came into music, bro, and having to make that transition, like, from the streets to actually becoming a full-time artist, you know, it's a lot of ups and downs that come with it, you know, and I say this a lot, it's a lot of adversity that you got to face and overcome. And overall, it's been pretty much that, you know, just battling with myself pretty much, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's why I'm so passionate about what I do because it all fall on me, you know what I'm saying? If, if things do or don't go a certain way, you know what I'm saying? And that's a lot of what I experienced with this album, creating this album, bro, just a lot of, a lot of emotions, you know, I went through a lot of emotions creating this album because I was kind of like, grieving and stressed out, you know what I'm saying, with the loss of, uh, of my little brother in early January. And and dealing with that and still trying to, you know, find motivation to get up and go to the studio every day and still be able to, you know, do my part at home and being a father and still, you know, just working because it don't stop, you know? And I feel like when I go through those times, those tough times, it some, you got to find it. You got to look for, you know, the purpose in getting up and working and wanting to get better. But it's it's always something that's, that's good that's good that come from it. You know what I'm saying? It's always light at the end of the tunnel. And I feel like that's why this album was such a good album because it wasn't just me just in the studio like, all right, let me just put some music together. You know what I'm saying? I went through a lot of different emotions and it took a lot for me to actually buckle down and just get it done and get to the finish line, bro. You know what I'm saying? And you could hear it in the in the project. Like like you like you said, you hear celebration, you hear pain and suffering, you hear me being aware of the situation. Like all three of those things you said was spot on, bro. You know, and I feel like anything you're doing, especially something tough, you gotta lean towards it, you know what I'm saying, to get through it. And that's what I had to do to really complete this project, man. And I was passionate about it from the start to the finish for sure. Yeah, man. I mean, like, listening to, like, no jail time. No jail time. Like, you coming from Chicago, bro. I grew up in Harlem, and I know that we don't have, like, the best examples when it comes to us, like, doing what we're doing now. 
So like f the foreseeable future might seem so far. I feel like No Jail Time is one of the most important records on there because it's like saying that you got rich No Jail Time and being an example from you coming from Chicago, you basically showing these kids that it's a lot that you could do and you don't have to accept the cards that's dealt to you. Um, that's why I wanted to start at, you know what I mean? With, with, with on the album, it's like take me through that, making that record. Um, that's man, it's it's funny you saying that, bro, because I, I really meant it, you know what I'm saying? Like just me coming from where I come from and going through so much, you know what I'm saying? Especially at such an early age, like even when I was in my early 20s, like 20 years old and 21, I still kind of had like one foot in and one foot out, you know what I'm saying? Being in the streets and still being an artist and trying to like perfect actually becoming an artist and getting to where I am now, you know what I'm saying? And, and being in the industry so long and reaching this much success. I, I, it's, it was crazy to me that I'd never been to prison. Like I never I always caught like breaks and blessings. You know, I've been in trouble, of course, you know what I'm saying? but. It just mean that I'm destined to be here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't take life as a coincidence. You know, I'm in these rooms and I'm in a position in a situation that I am whether good or bad because I'm meant to, you know what I'm saying? I'm meant to, it's, it's meant for me to go through a lot of these things just to make me the person that I am today. And it's crazy where I come from. I don't really, I ain't never met no millionaires in my neighborhood unless they sold drugs. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I really, I beat the eyes and I didn't have to cut myself short, you know what I'm saying? Or take the shortcut. I didn't have to settle to become a drug dealer. I didn't have to stay in the streets. I did all the uncomfortable things. It was easy for me to stay in the streets. I could have just been in the streets and just took what came with it because that was the easiest thing for me to do. It was hard for me to make the sacrifice to separate myself from my friends, separate myself from everything that I knew and go to the studio every day and grind every day, night in and, and night out, you know what I'm saying? And actually chase my dreams. That wasn't the easy thing for me to do. You know what I'm saying? It was easy for me to just go and get into trouble and, and, and go do some jail time because I'm focused on what's in front of me. You know what I'm saying? So just me saying it was like, it's like bittersweet, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking back on, on my life and reflecting on the decisions that I made and it worked out, it paid off for me in the long run, you know what I'm saying? So me saying that I got rich, no jail time, it's like, it's crazy coming from where I come from and, and from my perspective, speaking that way. It's like a lot of people not fortunate enough to say that, like I never did no jail time, not a year, not a, no months in jail for nothing, you know what I'm saying? It actually became a millionaire and I could take care of my family. And that's why that record is important. Like. Uh, and, and from the outside looking in, I'm glad that, you know, y'all received it that way. Absolutely. I mean, I listen to that and then I go to demands where it's like I was going to ask you, how did you feel the, the, the responsibility portion? But like on demands, it seems like you really accept accountability and more than anything, you trying to come up with solutions or, or and, and not just for the youth, but just for people your age and older to take a look in the mirror themselves and, and not specifically not just to make excuses, but to say, yo, like get up and do something with yourself. Like if you getting up every day and you get the opportunity to live, take advantage of that. That like demands is such a really important record. Um, definitely, because you know, like you said, you really you hitting it all spot on, bro. Because if you could make excuses about something, you could hold yourself accountable for everything that you got going on in your life. You know, and that's one of the most important things to me about being a man, especially. You know, what I'm saying and everybody should hold themselves accountable, men and women, but especially men. And I think I got this far because I hold myself accountable for everything that I'm doing. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't settle for less. You know what I'm saying? And that's one of the reasons why um, I didn't have to go do jail time or my life wasn't taken from me at such an early age because I understood what I was up against. You know what I'm saying? And I understood what I had to do to get through these things. And if I didn't, then it's only my fault, you know, because everybody got their own calling in their own path and everybody got choices no matter what you're going through no matter the circumstances you all have we all got choices and demands is one of those records where a lot of us like to point the finger and you know what i'm saying blame somebody else for for a lot of the trauma that we receive and a lot of the stuff that we go through but at the end of the day you had a choice to change your situation for yourself or at least take the steps to 
try to change your situation and then maybe somebody will want to help you. But nobody's going to want to help you and make your situation better if all you're doing is pointing the finger, you know, and, and a lot of the controversy and the stuff that's going on with, you know, police brutality and stuff like that. Um, of course, everybody knows it's wrong. Everybody knows we deserve better as a people, but we got to hold ourselves accountable and try to, you know, make a change for ourselves and start with the youth. You know, I'm a, I'm a father, so I don't want my, my kids to have to, you know, face a lot of the stuff that I had to face and go through it. And I got to hold myself accountable knowing that I got to do the things to make sure that my kids don't live the way I do that. My nieces and nephews and uh, my younger cousins and the kids in my neighborhood and the kids that I care about. I got to do my part and that's not being able to fix everything overnight, but at least, you know, giving hope and, and motivate. And, and it's all about it go back to accountability, man. We got to we got to take the steps to, to make stuff not even necessarily better, but um, more accessible, you know what I'm saying? More access to resources and jobs. And if we have it, if we're able to do so, and I'm, I'm able to do that, I, I'm able to provide, you know, opportunities for people. And, you know, right. if you do that, if you do that, then they able to, they able to take, say, all right, I'm gonna do what I need to do to, to make my situation better. You know what I'm saying? And that's all about, holding yourself accountable. And that's why records like demands is important because I'm speaking about the stuff that's wrong, but I'm also saying this is what we need to do to make it better for ourselves, not just wait on somebody to make it better for us, you know? Right. And I mean, on this album, like you drop a lot of, I, I feel like you leaving a lot of lessons for a lot of people. It feels like a letter to the streets, but also it's a lot of letters and a lot of gems you drop in there for your sons. Like one of the lines that stuck out to me was, was when you said, son, um, you said, son, don't pick up that gun if you can't stand that flame. You know yeah. what I mean? Like be, being a father, you know what I mean? Like, just basically leave us something because you of course you know your your shine like he by the time he 10 he going you he already going crazy so you know how he gonna be by the time he 10 but it's just like you leaving stuff for him so that he could immediately pick it up and as he's growing as a young boy to being a man like you not only giving him life lessons as being his dad but as being an artist that he can listen to as his dad exactly exactly um you know i believe in i believe in karma good and bad karma i believe in you you getting out of the world what you put into it you know what i'm saying so lines like that when i said don't pick up that gun son if you can't stand the flame even if um my bad excuse me hey tell her to walk around that way but um like <laughs> it's so good if, it's real life you know you live by the sword you live by the sword you could die by the sword you know what i'm saying and if you live a certain way it may not happen to you right away but you you lose a lot you know what i'm saying you lose people you love you lose a lot of yourself just making certain decisions. You know what I'm saying? I want my, my kids to understand that because my dad was like that. You know, he couldn't live for me. He always told me, I can't make decisions for you when you leave the house. You know what I'm saying? And I could do everything in my power to make it easier for you and try to shape you to be the man that I know you can be. But at the end of the day, if you go out and you make certain decisions, you're gonna have to live with the consequences of those, of those you know, of your actions and nobody could save you from that but yourself you know and i want to be able to instill that same knowledge and power within self and my kids you know what i'm saying and i feel like if i don't then i failed as a father we're doing 20 uh, we're doing um 25 right and the record turning 25 you celebrated that in um new york right your birth your 25th birthday i wanted to know what was the difference between creating this album and creating pstd i mean ps PTSD, um, my fault. Yeah, we, uh, no, you good, bro. We, 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 with PTSD, it was it was like different and the same in a sense. You know, when I recorded PTSD, I was like, I was going through a lot. You know, I was stuck in Chicago. Um, I couldn't travel, and this was before like the pandemic. Like, I felt like I really uh, went through two pandemics, man. I couldn't travel for like. 10 months, I was just stuck in Chicago, stuck in the house, and I was only limited to really home in the studio. So I felt alone in a sense, you know, I kind of felt left out because the world was moving around me. You know, my peers were still able to do shows and tour and do all the rolling louds and stuff like that. And I was just, 
sitting, just, you know, um, recording a project that I don't know what it's going to do. My fans ain't seen, heard from me in almost a year. So, I mean, of course, I know my core fan base and my diehard fans waiting, but I'm still trying to appeal to the world that's moving around me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm realistic. I know that it's unlimited talent out here. You know what I'm saying? It's always the next best thing. So you can't really get stuck in your ways and feel like, all right, I'm hot enough to just take a step back from everything and still drop and pick up where I left off. You know, you always got that certain doubt in the back of your mind. You know what I'm saying? So I went through a lot of emotions recording PTSD, but you know, uh, two five, especially I was, you know, free. I was able to move around. I was in LA recording. Although we was like in the middle of a pandemic, I was cool. You know what I'm saying? I got everything around me. I got a nice ass crib. I got my cars, but I still was going through a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, with the untimely, you know, passing of my little brother and, you know, me fighting this case and stuff like that. You know, I was under a lot of pressure. I was stressed out a lot. And I wanted to just see, I wanted to see everything through. You know, I wanted to put a project out where people would appreciate me and what I'm going through and just trying to get knowledge and, and understanding and motivation. Like my music, I don't really, I don't really create music for like moods or mood music or party music. You know, it's cool. I like to have fun, you know what I'm saying? And I like to create records where we have fun, but I always want my music to be an extension and, a, and a, a, a reflection of me and what I'm going through. So with 2-5, it was me actually turning 25 years old and being grateful for everything that I have, but still realizing that, you know what I'm saying, nothing is given to me. And I had to work hard for it. And I lost a lot, a lot along the way. You know, I lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of myself, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I really, I became numb mm -hmm. to a lot of stuff. Like, you know, I deal with a lot of death, you know, um, my cousin, my older cousin just passed away three days ago, four days ago. And a lot of times when I do stuff like that, I really don't even, I don't know how to feel because I'm so used to it. You know, it happens so much where I don't even, I can't even process my thoughts and my feelings. I just feel like I gotta keep going. I gotta keep moving because I gotta be in front of people. I gotta please my fans. I gotta go to the studio. I still gotta be a father, you know what I'm saying? So I can't really let a lot of that stuff weigh on me. And with the project, with, you know what I'm saying, recording that album, I had to go through all of that. I had to go through that and still create something where the world outside don't really know what I'm going through because I don't complain. I don't go on the internet and tell people what I'm feeling, but I still want to be able to let them feel it through my music and create something that's, that people are going to appreciate. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like the difference in, in, in right. both of those albums was I matured a lot, you know what I'm saying? And I wasn't really focused on just mental health and spreading awareness of what it is and what it means to me. I was just focused on where I am in life, you know what I'm saying? And why I think the way I do at 25 years old, you know, because in a year's time, a lot has changed. You know, I grew, I'm a, I'm a different man than I was last year, you know? And I just wanted my music to really like reflect that for real. No, I feel that, man. And listen, you've been doing it, bro. You've been you've been growing with every release, with every project, with every move. And I'm 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 proud to see the man that you're becoming. Um, we got to get to some fan questions. So we're gonna take some questions from the chat, and I'm a, I'm gonna queue them up for you. Sure. Okay. Uh, Big Steve five times wants to know, what's your favorite album that you've made? Um, my favorite album that I made, probably, uh, I honestly, I would, I would, if I wasn't, if I went to exclude Two Five, because that's probably my favorite right now at the moment, but that I made, I would have to choose, it would be a tie maybe between Ballin' Like I'm Kobe and, 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 and Walk in the Face of my first ever, that was a mixtape actually, it wasn't even an album. 
But uh, I was just riding, I don't know, I don't, like three days ago, I was riding to my old music. And I think that's why I like Too Fast so much because I really didn't recognize, like, I really came into the game, like, spitting with real lyricism, like, and, and pain and passion, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't really notice it's been so long, bro. And I was, you know, I'm, I'm true to it. It was nothing that, like, I didn't think too much about it. I was just rapping. I didn't even realize that I was rapping so good at such a young age. And I kind of felt like I lost touch of it. I lost sense of it because maybe, I don't know, I wasn't as hungry. I started making money, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas started making millions and coming from nothing. You kind of, like, take a step back and start making music that you think uh, that you think the fans want, you know what I'm saying? But I got this far for being myself, and the fans just wanted me to be that, you know? And I feel like I got back to that with 2-5. I just tapped into my inner self, man, and made music with raw lyricism and, and realness, you know what I'm saying? And, and gritty wordplay and stuff like that. I came into the game with that, you know? So with Ballin' Like I'm Kobe and walking to Faso land, those were projects where I was like, just letting it all pour out, you know what I'm saying? And I feel 2-5 is one of those projects that, that take me back to my roots in a sense, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always been rapping throughout my career, don't get me wrong, you know, but I just feel like I took a step back from what I love the most, and that's just, just, letting it all out of me in the studio. Just whatever I'm going through, whatever I'm thinking, not hesitating, just putting it on wax and putting the project together based off that, you know? So if I had to choose, it'd probably be, I would probably pick Ball like I'm cold over Walker the face on land, but they both neck and neck. Gotcha. And no so uh, OTF double O wants to know. <laughs> Got you. They want to know, is the, uh, Full version of Letter to the Street is going to be on a deluxe. Um, the full version. Uh, I actually, you know, I'm working on something, a uh, project. Well, because a lot of my music, bro, and my fans, you know, my, my core fans, they know it get leaked. So I like, I fall out of love with it. I don't know how my music get leaked. You know, maybe I was recording it the wrong studios or giving too many people access to my music and then it get leaked, bro. So I would like not even want to put it on my on my on my albums no more. So I'm working on a project called Platinum in the Streets. And I'm gonna just take like a lot of my favorite songs that got leaked and just polish them up, get them mixed and mastered and put them out that way. So that's gonna be one of those records that I'm gonna put on that, you know what I'm saying? Like some of my favorite songs, some of the hardest shit I ever made got leaked on YouTube, you know, and my fans hear it, but the world never heard it, mm. you know what I'm saying? So I definitely want to still put records like that out for sure. Got you. I seen this, this question pop up a few times, I don't see it at the moment, but the few people wanted to know when is No Limitations dropping? Uh, me and Bibby was just hollering about it, man, not too long ago. Uh, I don't know if everybody's seen he. He just reposted, you know, his birthday was the other day on the 18th. And he just reposted, like, you know, when I when I uh, put him on my page, wishing him a happy birthday, and he like, man, I'm about to let bro pull me out of retirement. So uh, we gonna just lock in, bro. I think we need to go to Chicago for like two weeks and just feel the vibe, feel the energy, and record our project out there, man, and put it out. But it's coming soon, soon, like real soon. I give it. I give it less than a year, man. I'm trying to like flood them with music, you know, so we're going to put it out within the next 12 months for sure. Got you. Um, Ant Got It wants to know when is the 25 tour going to start? The tour, I'm working, I'm going back and forth with my agency right now, man, and we just figuring out the dates. We brought it about. 20 dates already and um we probably gonna launch the tour with all the dates maybe uh next month sometime maybe like uh late august early september for sure that's dope that's dope so i got my last because i know you got to go but i got i got a question i want to know and this is something that you said on the, on the album baby you got three homes and you don't get no sleep <laughs> yeah, I don't sleep. I said, Bibby. <laughs> I'm about to go. I'm for her, bro. I, I go. A lot, man. You know, I, I, be, I really could. I need to take a step back and just rest, bro. Like, I was up with my son 
Man, I went to sleep at 8.30 a.m. this morning up with my son, and I got up at 10.30 and had to, you know, shower and get my day started, man. I don't, I really don't sleep, it's crazy. And I'm not, I don't even really be like exhausted. I'll be able to like get up and just get to work and, and keep my day going, man, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, you know, I definitely got multiple cribs and I don't go to sleep, bro. That's crazy. I don't know. Yeah, you ain't getting no sleep no I time soon it. either, bro. With, the, with yeah, little man right there, you ain't getting no sleep. Breaking <laughs> friends, man. You know what I'm saying? But I only really get tired when I'm at home. I only get comfortable when I'm like holding my son or laying down with my girl or something. That's the only time I get comfortable enough to go to sleep for real. Nah, man. Well, that's amazing, brother. Well, keep doing everything that you got going on. You know that you got nothing but love and support over on my side. You know how you sure. do, bro. You come up to Harlem and you be up there running around by yourself anyway. <laughs> we locked in, man. You know, I go to Harlem. I go to, uh, I go eat at Lighthouse. I'm just outside, posted, chilling, shooting three dice. You know, I, I, I be cool when I get to the city, man. You right. <laughs> Exactly. Well, Herbo, man, thank you for coming. Listen, this is my second episode, man, and I'm happy that I got to work with somebody who I got a ton of respect for, you and your team. I'm looking forward to everything that y'all do, and we're going to catch up with you soon, man. God bless you and the babies. Uh, I'm going to come back down, man. I need to give me a face-to-face like Vince, man. Let's do it. Whenever you're ready, bro, we can double back. That's not a problem. All right, in a minute, bro. Peace. All right.